Okay. Just don't want to take any chances that uh, I won't be able to get the video uploaded because I went on too long. Um, <clears throat> let's see now, where was I? So what we're probably looking at planning and going ahead, and I don't know if we're going to have you know, I'd love to have a litter later this year, at least one litter later this year. Um, and we'll announce that on our website if it does happen. Um, and then um, I, going forward, two, maybe three litters until I decide that it's time to to um, to quit altogether. Um, and where that brings me is we do have a number of mature adults that we would like to see placed in permanent homes to cut back on our pack. Um, back to those puppies, those, those puppies were born on January 12th of this year. So they're almost eight months old, seven months old. Um, and I have the two Pyridoodles, they are F1B, all from our lines, started here. Um, and then... We have four standard poodles, AKC standard poodles, that are still ready for homes. Um, I will consider special adoptions for them. Um, and we may be having our vet out here soon to update rabies. And we're just going to go ahead and get the rabies for those dogs as well, for those puppies, since they're of age. Um, and then I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14 highlighted, and I will have to get my glasses, sorry, comes with age. Um, and I will start with our males, Gibbs. He was born 6-18-2019. He's a beautiful, beautiful uh, party standard poodle, and he's been a great sire for us. Uh, Everest, Old English Sheepdog, purebred Old English Sheepdog, AKC. Um, not that the papers matter, because in most cases, we will have these dogs spayed and neutered before they ever leave our property. Um, again, that's to protect our dogs. And um, so you can, and that, the, the adoption fee that we ask is really just to cover that cost of having their, them vetted and um, spayed or neutered. Okay. And they will be up to date on rabies and all that good stuff. All right. Bernie, um, she's been spayed for quite a while. She's, she's a cutie pie. She's a sweet standard poodle, not a huge standard poodle. Uh, we actually acquired her as a young adult. Her birthday is 9, 10, 2017. Uh, don't know if I told you what Everest, Everest was born here. He's one of our own and he's the old English sheepdog. His birthday is 8, 22, 2018. Grant, um, I did purchase him out in the Midwest. I went and picked him up. Um, and I now have his son, Ty. So it's time for Grant to retire. And his birthday is 9-7-2019. He is a standard poodle. Okay. Uh, Lovey, Old English Sheepdog, her sister um, has already been adopted out. And uh, that was Lovey and I can't remember her sister's name. That's terrible. It'll come to me. Lovey is spayed. Bernie is spayed. Frankie is uh, an Old English Sheepdog. She is not spayed, but she also is not fertile. She can't have puppies. Um, Clara is her sister, and we are retiring her. And their birthday is 9-18-2019. If, if I don't mention the birthdays, um, just get in touch with me, and um, I'll give you more clarification as to the dogs. And I also have pictures of all the parents so I can share them individually with everyone. All right, Cora is a uh, Merle Standard Poodle and she is retiring. She's been one of our best moms. And uh, she was born in December of 2019. Becca is a first gen, oh my goodness, I wanna keep this dog so bad, but honestly, we just can't. I've got some cranky old seniors in my house. Um, as some of you know, I did lose my tumbles after 12 years. Uh, just a few weeks ago, and um, so it, it, my, my seniors deserve priority rather than bringing in a new younger dog, but Becca, oh my goodness, if you want a dog that's just going to cuddle with you all the time, loves attention, just 
I mean, and she's so beautiful. She's a gorgeous, gorgeous dog. I do have uh, pictures of her. Fancy, she is a tricolor Great Mountainese Doodle. Becco is a Great Mountain. These are first generation Great Mountainese Doodles. And uh, Fancy is gorgeous, um, plenty of energy, and she is ready for her new home. Mia, who is spayed, never bred, uh, Old English Sheepdog. And Angel is, uh, she's actually, which, oh no, it's Lady. Okay, Angel and Lady are sisters. They're both standard poodles. Um, and they're brown and white. There's no moral genetics in there, but it doesn't matter because, again, these are for pet homes only. And we will be lining up to have a few more of them um, spayed and neutered. Lady, like our Frankie, is, um, she's never had puppies. She's infertile. Okay, and Angel, her sister, has had a couple of puppies for us. Actually, it's her puppies, the standard poodles that we have, um, were out of her and Gibbs that were born back in January, and they are beautiful, because Gibbs is a tricolor. She is brown. Um, we had... We had everybody, everybody in that litter, with the exception of our one red and white party, um, who we still have here also, uh, was uh, a tricolor, basically. Um, Georgia, I wanted to breed her so bad, but again, I, it's just not going to happen because of the way things are. She was born here, first generation Great Mountainese Doodle. She is an absolutely gorgeous red and white brindle. I have no idea how that happened, but it did. <laughs> um, it must have been somewhere in the genetics. Um, and Gibbs is her dad. So, all right. Uh, let's see. You know, Cotton and Candy are my two young girls that we'll be keeping here. They're Old English Sheepdogs. And um, they we hope to have. And Kiwi, Seneca, and Tessie, they're standard poodles. They'll be staying with me. So, that's five girls there, um, and everybody else on my girl list. So we're going to be down basically two, five girls as part of our breeding program going forward for sheep and doodles only. Okay. And, uh, then as far, we do have Chase is our newest big old English sheep dog. And, um, we still have Bash, um, and then tie. Now I did keep, no, I did keep two female standard poodles out of Angel's litter, Angel and Gibbs litter, and one male standard poodle and they're non-merle genetics. So, um, anyway, so that is where we're going to be. But, uh, if you know anybody that's looking for an adult, um, you know, on my adults for adoption page, I do have a little bit of a synopsis as far as like what to expect, because a lot of people think adopting an adult is easier. Our dogs live in a great atmosphere. I mean, and they're happy. They're happy here. Um, but it is a transition and we generally recommend either you already have a dog or maybe adopt two of them, um, because they're used to being part of a pack. And we found that the most struggles that adult adoptions have been in the past have been the ones that have gone to a household with no other dogs. And um, they are pack animals by nature. So when they've been part of a pack, um, that can be quite an adjustment for them. Okay. So keep that in mind. They are being taken from everything they've ever known from the time they were a puppy, or in many cases with some of ours that we have here as part of our um, program, they were born here, so they've never known anywhere else. Uh, we've had many successful adoptions over the years, but if I have a return, uh, generally it's an adult before it's ever a puppy, okay? Um, and then again, like I said, we still have six puppies to place, four standard poodles, three males, one female, and two female F1B Great Mountain, I mean, excuse me, Pure Doodles. Um, and that will be the end of our standard poodles. That will be the end of our Pure Doodles. Um, and like I said, we're just going to be going forward on a slower uh, pace, probably just two or three litters a year, um, and all Sheep Doodles. Okay, 
and we probably will not be acquiring any additional adults or keeping any additional adults because from here we're probably going to work out into retirement. So that is where we are. This is, I didn't know if I said it in the beginning, today's the 13th of July, 2024. And I just wanted to bring everybody up to date where we are at La Padoodle Canine Manor. Um, we are doing well, God provides. So uh, it was a better position for us at this time to deal with the negative market and other things that have um, changed everything with regard to our program as well as everybody else's. Um, it seems to me I wanted to touch base back on something else earlier from earlier, but um, oh, and there was something that I did slip off of. Um, during the COVID shutdowns, one of the worst things I saw, and I think I was telling you that, I mean, you could practically hear people crying through there, but people would have a deposit down and already have picked their puppy. Well, because puppies were in such demand, I mean, I even had people offer extra money to get like on the top of the list or have pick of the litter. And I'm sorry, that goes against my values. And I would not do that. Um, and I felt pushed in the past about a few things that I just really didn't feel that was fair to my existing customers. And I had to get out of that situation. So, um, you know, I just... I, there's no way I was going to do that. But what I saw happen was people posting that they had picked out their puppy, their kids had fallen in love with it. They may not have seen it yet, but they had already an emotional investment in that puppy that they had picked out with that breeder. And then they got contacted by that breeder and said, I'm sorry, I sold your puppy to someone else. These breeders were out selling to the highest bidders. Now, again, this is a business. Yes, I'm not doing it to not make money, but to do it that way, I, you know, come to your own conclusions. But I saw a lot of that happening during the COVID shutdown. So I think that hurt the reputation of breeders as well with people pulling stunts like that. Um, again, the scammers have made a lot of people skeptical. Um, they're claiming that if you do collect a deposit, which is a commitment between me and that you know, customer wanting to buy that puppy, and it's quite commonplace for, for um, especially if the litter hasn't even been born or conceived, but is in, in planning stages. Um, and people will put deposits down to get themselves on that list. Um, anyway, they're out there saying, well, and I will say, deposits are one of the ways that you have to be very careful who you're dealing with and really look into the background. And I'm certainly help, happy to talk to you on the phone, make sure you know I'm legit. Um, but uh, the deposits, it has been a way that the scammers have been taking money from people. And I had it happen to myself. Fortunately, I was able to get my bank to stop the payment um, to PayPal, but PayPal had already paid the scammer, even though I disputed it immediately. And <laughs> 22 years, I had a PayPal account and they blocked me off. So Good riddance, to be honest with you. It was their loss more than mine. They made so much money in fees on my business the last 15, 16 years. They're the ones that lost. So I no longer take PayPal. We do have Square, which operates very similar. Uh, I have links for deposits on my um, website. Uh, if somebody places a deposit, there is a 4% uh, fee for Square. Uh, as there was with PayPal, and that's because we just don't generate enough revenue to be able to swallow those fees. Um, so anyhow, you know, that's all the normal stuff for us in the past. But don't let people tell you that leaving a deposit is a scam, okay, because that's not true. Leaving a deposit has been the norm for many, many years. The scammers have turned it into scams. Um Let's see, what else can I tell you? I think that's just about it. And I may come back with another video update. Maybe I can get my live working. I don't know. Um, but I, I was on vacation for 10 days. I drove myself all the way down to South Carolina to spend some time on Lake Kiwi with my brother and his wife, my sister, my dear sister-in-law, and then drove from there down to Florida to spend some time with my son and then gradually made my way back. Um, this was back in June and I had a really, really good trip. Um, uh, my Jeep was a champ, um, traveled well, kept me comfortable despite my back injury. I do have a massager, which is kind of nice in my car, but, 
Um, anyway, so a lot of things have kind of gotten put back, and I just wanted to bring everybody up to date as to where we are uh, with Law Padoodle. We have not gone anywhere. We're still here, and we are still praying that our last older six puppies will find homes sooner than later. They're doing well. They're happy. They're playing. They're enjoying each other. Um, the conflict we're going to run into is we're not planning on spaying or neutering anybody before a year old if they're still here at that time and um, for health reasons. But, you know, we're going to have a conflict. We only have eight yards and I don't want brothers and sisters together as they go get to sexual maturity. And um, I also don't can't move them into a yard without a boy if I have a boy on every single yard. So uh, we have, my husband's been really doing well and checking everything and, and juggling around as needed, but uh, we are going to run into a tight spot as those uh, puppies do mature. So we'd like to really, really see them get homes. And like I said, at this point, I mean, it's a loss for me anyway. I look at it from, you know, seven, having them here for seven months, but um and they are fully vaccinated, short of rabies, which uh, we will likely have done in the next week or two. Um, but uh, I just would like to see them get homes and have families and just live like we all want our doggies to live. Um, so please reach out to me and I will consider special adoptions for those puppies just to see them in homes. Um, and again, um, the easiest way to get a hold of me is to text me, give me a name when you do so that I can track you down. Just a phone number doesn't tell me who it is or anything like that, but you can text me at 301-820-2272 and Law Padoodle Canine Manor at pm.me, me. Um, that is my email address and, uh, Facebook messaging, you know, it's okay, but the biggest challenge I find when I when it used to be only email that I communicated with, it was so easy, easy to search people um, and find them, especially when I was reaching out to people to pick their puppies um, from a litter off the out off of our reservation list. But now there's so many different avenues of communication, and sometimes it's very frustrating for me to find. Where was I? What method did that person communicate with me? And if there's not a name attached to the uh, um, text, then I can't find you. I mean, I can't search out a number or guess what number it was that they contacted me. Um, so please, you know, just do your best to try to utilize email or text. Those are the most two assured ones. Um, Facebook messaging. If you're not a friend on my Facebook it's likely going to go into the other folder and I am not very good about checking those. I'm sorry. Um, and then, uh, on my business page there again, I do have it set up for auto response. I apologize for that, but I can't be there to always answer it. And I just don't utilize Facebook from a business point of view as diligently as other people do, because I only went into it kicking and screaming as it is just because everybody else was. So, um, anyway, thank you for your time. Again, it's Tina Law, Law Padoodle Canine Manor, uh, established 2008. We have a lot of experience. We've had a lot of heartache. We've had a lot of happy times, um, challenges. You know, it's it's not been easy, um, and I have enjoyed my time off, uh, but I'm just not ready to throw in the towel quite yet. So, um, you know, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, keep your head up. These are challenging times for everybody and have been since COVID. And um, we're still reeling in the aftermath of that. And, you know, just keep your head up, keep your faith strong, and may God bless each and every one of you. Thank you.